For Laboratory 1, we're going to explore the density of soap. To do this laboratory, you will need a rectangular bar of soap. It should be rectangular. Do not use soap such as this curved bar with multiple curved surfaces. This won't work because we're going to rely on the soap having a length, width, and height that we can multiply to get a volume. So it must be rectangular for that to work. This curved cam won't work. I'm going to, uh, some of the ones that I know are rectangular are this style basic, uh, this Jurgens. It's also rectangular. Ivory is nice and rectangular. And uh, this pure Castile bar soap is rectangular, although it feels a little hard and it may be difficult to cut. We want a bar of soap that we're going to cut because what we'll do is we'll actually make three measurements of the volume and the mass of the soap. The first thing to note is the mass of the soap. This Jurgens actually says this is 85 grams. The Baydal Basic, each bar is 90.7. The Ivory, each bar is uh, 90 grams. And the Pier Castile bar is 140. So, you'll want to note that number because that's your mass, your starting mass for your soap. So, I'm going to go ahead and use one of the Jurgen soaps. You'll need some kind of a knife to work with in this laboratory. Be careful. So, I know this bar of soap is 85 grams because the wrapping has told me that this is an 85 gram bar of soap on the outside wrapper. You will need to see the outside wrapper to do this lab. The inner part of the soap does not have any markings on it. I'll take this off because I'm going to measure the soap to get the volume. It is a rectangular bar of soap as you can see here. And I'm going to measure the length, the width, and the height of the bar. But be careful. Notice these edges are beveled on the soap. They're beveled edges. So I'll want to measure the full width at the middle. Here I'm using a ruler I can actually see through. And I'm measuring not the size of the bevel itself, but the full width of the soap from one end to the other. And I can see that I've got a length of about 8.1 centimeters. Write that down. 8.1 I've got a width, and again, not the bevel, I'm going to the very end, both edges of the soap, looking through my ruler. It's about five. You can also use a ruler like this. Be careful to use centimeters in this lab. We want to use the centimeter side of the ruler. So there we can see this about about 5.1 centimeters. I measure it carefully. Five. 0.1 is the width. And then for the height, I'm going to measure that a little bit more than 2.2. Let me cross check with my clear ruler so I can see all the way through. Yeah, that thing is, uh, this bar is very close to 2.3 uh, centimeters. About 2.3 centimeters. I'll work out the volume a little in a moment. The mass, I know because that was on the wrapping here, the mass of that bar is 85 grams. What I'll do next is, I know the bar is 8.1 long, so I'll find that place right here. Half of 8.1 is 4.05, so this is half the bar, and I'll very carefully cut that bar in half as cleanly as I can. Now, I might not have gotten it exactly in half, but I hope I have. Because now, I will measure the length of the bar. It's about 4.1. This way. The width should be the same. Looks like that's staying the same. 5.1. And the, across this part here, the middle. Yep. 2.3, I can now see that that was right. And I cut it in half, and if I've done a good job cutting it in half, if it's a clean, two equal halves, I should have half of 85. 
how about uh, he can work this out with a calculator but 42.5 grams I'll take whichever half looks like it's the better half of a half you can see they're not exactly equal and I will cut that half in half measuring this way find that 2.5 mark and I'll cut that piece in half again be careful use a cutting board or something to cut on that piece is probably no good but this is a nice clean half of a half and so this one I'll measure one more time this one now has a length of about four it has a length of about four that way roughly and it's got a width this way of about 2.5 2.6 due to the middle and the uh, height of the soap is holding at 2.3 this is a half of that so it should be about 21.25 grams if I've done a good job cutting my halves in half I've lost a little bit from it but in theory this should be one quarter of the original mass of the soap. I've now gone ahead and multiplied the length times the width times the height to get the volume. The volume of the first being 95.013, the volume of the second being 52.785, and the volume of the third being 23.92. I would note that when you do measure, be careful that the end of the ruler may not be the zero. When you are measuring the soap, be careful to start from the zero on the ruler. This ruler has a little bit of extra at the end there, as does this ruler also has the zero offset from the end. So in order to measure accurately, I will have to make sure I'm measuring from the zero on the end of the you know, a little bit of the ruler sticking off. I'm measuring from the zero on the ruler. Here, too, the same thing. Do watch out for that when you're working with your ruler. Start your measurement from zero, not the end of the ruler. So do be careful. I'm going to use Desmos to enter my data onto a graph and analyze that data. I'll open up Desmos. On the left side, there's a plus sign. I'll click on the plus and there's table on that menu. I'll click on the table. Now I'm going to tap on the X right to the right of the X up here. Delete the X and I'm going to, I'll usually be at this screen to start, I'll click on the ABC and I'll put a capital V for volume there. I'll tap over here and I'll put a lowercase m for the mass here. For the volume, I've got that in my data table. I'll switch back to the keyboard, 95.013 for a mass of 85 grams. The second volume, 52.785 and a mass of 42.5. And the third one, a volume of 23.92 cubic centimeters and a mass of 21.25 grams. Now, you might note that on my graph, I don't see any points. That's because I, my, bound, my, my X and Y boundaries only go from about negative 10 to 10. So on a smartphone, I simply pinch the graph until I see the points appear. That's certainly the easy way to work with it on a smartphone. There's a little minus sign on the right side that you can click uh, if you're working in a laptop or desktop environment to do the same thing. I'm going to, there's a little wrench tool here. I'm going to click on the wrench and I'm going to add a label to the X axis. That axis is the volume in cubic centimeters. Always label your axes. The Y axis is the mass in grams. And then I just simply tap on the wrench and it will label the axes. The next thing I have to do is an analysis. And to do that, I'll just tap down here below the table. I'll get a new line. Here, I'm going to enter an equation 
where the mass is going to be approximately equal to the slope times the volume. So I'll start off with the m1. This has to match both the case, upper and lower case are, are sensitive in decimals, so I've got a, a, a mass is lowercase. And then I'm going to switch back to ABC. At the bottom, you'll see a little tilde. I don't use an equal sign. I use a tilde here. It means the mass is approximately equal to. For density, um, in physical science, we use the letter P. The letter D is reserved for distance. So P is my density. And then I'll need a capital V for volume to match what was in my table. And I'll need to put a 1 in because my table had a 1 after the V. With that done, I can see that M1 is approximately PV1. The next line, statistics and residuals, ignore that line. Statistics is a statistics uh, measure that you encounter in statistics class. Ignore the R and R squared values that may appear there, in this case R squared. What we're interested in is the parameter, P, the density. P is 0 0.87. That is the slope of the line. That is the slope of the line. And it is the density of the soap. The Drugen soap has a density of 0 0.87. Now, I will, I'm working on a smartphone, so I'm going to screen capture the graph up here. I'm going to screen capture this table separately, and I'm going to screen capture this equation here. I can't show you how that works on your phone. Every phone is slightly different. On some phones, you do press certain combinations of buttons. You'll have to look this up on the Internet. On my phone, I can touch the screen with three fingers and get a screen capture, but uh, that won't necessarily work for you. And I can crop my pictures automatically. If you're working on a laptop or desktop, you'll have to look up how to screen capture the uh, Desmos in the laptop and desktop. So I'll copy separately the graph, the table, and the analysis. I'll separately copy them to the document, and I'll paste them in uh, to the Google Docs document. Just to show you what that uh, would look like brought over into the document and how I can paste something in, I'll move the, uh, the uh, table here. just as an example. And so I'll open up, just to show you how to do this, I'll open up the, my Google Documents. I'll use a new document just so you can see where you get the image from. There's a plus sign at the top, image, and I simply say from photos. And there's my screenshot of my table and an earlier screenshot it's actually a little bit better looking today that I did. So there's my table. I can also um, add in from images. I previously did a screenshot of the graph. And I previously did a screenshot of the uh, analysis. It's good to include that. In the next section of the video, I'll build out on these three images. I'll uh, show you what the finished lab report looks like once I've included the other parts of the lab. But I've used screen capture to move the table, the graph, and the analysis over. The analysis being very important as it shows me the density of the soap at 0 0.87 grams per cubic centimeter. In this last segment, I'll take a look at the document with the sections added in. I've added in the title, of the header to the document here, Density of Soap. That's done in header level 1. I've formatted that in header level 1. That's a heading 1. Down the next section is the introduction. 
that section here is in uh, heading level 2. If I take a look at the, the format there. And in the introduction, I'm going to... Uh, it's in heading level 2. In the introduction, I'm going to tell the reader what you'll tell them. In this laboratory, the density of Jurgen soap was measured. The length, width, and height were measured in centimeters to calculate the volume. So tell the reader what you're going to find out in this section. You should also note that if the soap has a density of less than 1 gram per cubic centimeter, the soap will float. If it has a density of more than 1 gram per cubic centimeter, the soap will sink. Note that fresh water has a density of exactly 1 gram per cubic centimeter. I've got an equipment list. That header 2 is in heading 2 after the first level header, heading 1. There's only one heading level 1 at the top. Tell the reader what you use to do the experiment. The procedure. The procedure is written in a special form. It's written in an action verb direct object order. Tell the reader how to do it. This is a recipe, essentially. You're telling the reader how to repeat your experiment, so if they want, they can redo your experiment. They can replicate it, try it again. So here I've listed the steps I did. You list the steps that you did. But in the verb direct object order, you start with a verb, measure the length, calculate, record, cut, repeat, cut, repeat the measurements. The table of data and the caption that I put in earlier. This was that screen capture that I did. The graph of the data with labeled axes. That's another one from the screen capture done earlier. And the Desmos analysis. Useful for seeing how you did the analysis. Useful for seeing what equation you used to determine the density of, this, of the uh, soap. That, too, was done as a screen capture in the earlier section of the, of the video. And then, this was added, discussion and conclusions. Tell the reader what you found out. You told them that you would find the density of the soap. Report it. The odd data analysis showed that the soap had a density of 0 0.87 grams per cubic centimeter. Technically, the Jurgens soap, as I can't speak for other soaps. Note that that's less than one, and it predicts that the Jurgen soap should float. You should test your prediction, whatever value you get. If it's less than one, you're predicting it floats. If it's more than one, you're predicting it sinks. Test your soap. Take a piece and put it in water. Then tell the reader in this discussion whether your soap floated or sank. Did it float? Did it sink? Tell the reader what happened. That result, whether your soap floats or sinks, provides support for your result or possibly, depending on the way the numbers come out, may contradict your result. Uh, but do report to the reader what happened when you put the soap in water. And so that's the first basic physical science laboratory to measure the density of soap and to do so using a linear regression, it's seen here, to obtain a estimate of the slope you'll see that the points lay on, lay on a straight line and that the point zero zero is on that line, suggesting that if the volume was zero, the mass would be zero, which for the soap makes sense. So that's uh, the laboratory report structure and parts. You can review this video again if you want to see those again. In Schoology, your laboratory report will have the uh, headers uh, already in place to help you structure your first laboratory.